Yo everybody, what is going on? It is Roush, and welcome to week 10 of the weekly recap of the Pokemon Speedruns Draft League. And with me this week, I have a special guest. Scalvern, I am the coach of the New England, New England Braviary? Yeah. I am the coach who took over from Mizzled Sticks. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's funny because he's Australian. New England Australianers. <laughs> Aust Australians. Wow. Mm -hmm. I am tired, man. So, yeah, as you can see, taking a look at the overall standings, first we have the Huntsville Heatran, followed by the Jimboomban Jigglypuffs, the Caledonia Deerling, Broad Breilooms, Camden Cryogonals, Blackpool Blastoise, Para Saint Germain, uh, the New England Braviary, Wolverhampton Waddlers, and a very nice recent surge by Baffling Amoeba, despite a loss this week. Uh, 10th place are the Bludgeoners by Coach Eternalor. Then 11th are the Pacific Lord Waylord, Pacific Log Waylords, the Kentucky Fried Crawdont, Flavortown Flygons, and then last and certainly absent, Majors, Oakland Adaptability. Cool things to note. Um, just taking a look at the team MVPs, I don't know if it was just this week, but Gliscor becoming Battle Dolphins team MVP, uh, given the fact that he has mons like Excadrill, Zygarde 10%. I, I find that impressive that Gliscor has been able to shine on a, a team just like that. Uh, I feel the big thing for Gliscor is its ability to just stick around in a fight, just stay alive. Oh which... yeah. But I mean, based on how the, the MVP like scores generate you mm. have to get kills so gliscor not yeah. just staying alive but also uh picking off mons is a huge mm. part of it and i think uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, dolphin's team has so much depth like he really utilizes his entire team albeit how mm. stupid it is jigglypuff <laughs> um <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit mm -hmm. um just I think it only has like eight kills, but it's his team MVP. It's not high up on the overall MVP list, as uh, we'll take a look at here in just a little bit. But I guess just how balanced again, back his to, team is. Hmm, back to what you're saying, it's probably because he uses a lot of his mons and not just use them on for majority of the battles. Yeah. Even saying that though, Reiku hasn't been in for like every battle, but it's still the top mvp well raikou just happens to be whenever i bring it it just happens to be like my end goal for each and every mm. match and i really i really love using yeah. it it's a fun mon uh actually I, yeah when i drafted it at the very end like um my last two draft picks i had a tier one and a tier two slot open i had to select a tier tier two but yeah then i was gonna take a tier one uh, and I just kind of wanted, I was trying to look at, like, what are a pair of mons that go really well together? And mm. um, I needed an electric type because I wanted a flying resist. And I, to this day, will still say, yeah, Raikou is not quite a flying mm -hmm. resist. Um, but and Raikou ended up working out so well for me because mm. I have this recurring problem where my team is still weak to water. We'll talk about mm. that when we get into it. Yeah, you're able to, like, the main point I feel would be you're able to set up Reiku as your win condition in the late game, which can be said by a lot of the MVPs. Mm -hmm. Like, I can see Kartana yep. and what was the other one? Pinsa, which are both yep. really good late yep. game sweepers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, Lapras back on top. I don't know if it was there last week. Uh, Cobalion is uh, on top for Shape and the Flygons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Volcanion's been up there for a bit. Clef's been up there for a bit. Heatran and uh, Mega Scizor going back and forth as Fades' as team MVPs. So mm -hmm. not much change there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the MVP race. Here we go. Uh, let's see. First off, um, of course, we have Raikou as the number one overall MVP, but uh, Kartana catching up there, uh, despite the fact that Raikou has only been brought to six six matches, still hasn't died, is the main mm -hmm. reason why it's still 
on top in the MVP. Uh, also, not to mention, it has the most kills out of everyone with 17. So, I mean, like I said, every time that I brought it, it's kind of been the focus of my mm. team. Also, fun things to note, I have Swampert and Hydreigon in the top 25 as well. <laughs> Hydreigon having a uh, an okay week, and I think Swampert picked up a kill as well. Was that this week? I think it was. I hope it was. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's it's interesting see. to see your Swampert is so high, where the Mega Swampert, which has the Rain team to back it up, is very low on the ladder? No, 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 it's 12th. It's Where up there. It it's oh, 12th. okay. Yep. I just missed yep. it. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's... it's but just, just yeah. knowing that they're not that far apart, they brought, uh, they've mm. been brought to the same number of matches so far, they've been brought every week, both of them. It's... Mm -hmm. It's been interesting trying to play with Swampert um, as yeah, kind of a tank. It is, it's it not is, a bulky water. It's not. Mm, I've had to kind of versatile. use it as a bulky ground type, actually, is kind of the role yeah. it ends up fulfilling. So it's it's really it's really interesting to use. And fun fact, you see Lapras there at 25th. I hate that it's still on there. I hate Lapras. <laughs> Uh, let's scroll down a little bit here. Actually, oh, quick, take a look at the moves. Uh, the move side, Stealth Rux. Nine kills for Stealth Rux. Stealth Rux having a good week this week. Uh, nothing else really sticks out in my mind. Maybe move recoil. There may have been one or two move recoil kills this week. Mm -hmm. But not too much to note outside of that. Yeah, scrolling down here, we see some more stuff. Um, Karen Black, Kentucky Fried Crawdont, nine kills. Unfortunately, it's died almost every single week um yeah arcanine and swallow 34 36 swallow had a good week for me this week uh, got mm -hmm. a little bit of traction in there florius and verizian this week or well in the top 50 and you can't see it but just off screen at rank 54 is my uh mega beedrill so i have a full team plus in the top 55 <laughs> And mm -hmm. so really does, well done. So, so do the Jigglypuffs. So we were talking about the Jigglypuffs mm -hmm. having team depth. We see uh, Porygon 2, Zygarde 10%, Quillfish, and Zerkatry in the top 50. Just absolutely insane. And then uh, if, we can't see it right now, but if we scroll down a little bit more, he's got Rotom Wash and Mega Audino um, in the top uh, 60 as well. So just a really nice amount of team depth. Um, Camden Cryogonals, uh, Geno Kirby's got... Four Mons in the top 50. He's got um, Kartana, Zygarde, 50% for Alligator and Toxapex. So, uh, really nice team depth there. Just some really, really good Mons. Uh, you have Celesteela. Celesteela making yep. a comeback since since you picked it up. I think it had two kills in one week uh, and then was dropped. And then mm -hmm. you bringing it back is... Done really yeah, well. and even with the short amount of time that I've had it, to bring it up this far is actually pretty decent. Oh man, but Celesteela is such an incredible mon. Uh, oh, it was yeah. it was kind of on my radar um, mm. when I started building my draft, but then I I was like, well, you know, I've never used High Dragon before. Let's let's build a yeah. High Dragon squad, and uh, I ended up building um, a really fantastic. Uh, Fairy Dragon Steel Core and mm. uh, with High Dragon Florgus and Fortress, they 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 go together better than I would have thought, especially because uh, High Dragon and uh, Fortress have this sort of fast slow Volt Turn Core. Yes. So mm. stuff like stuff like that, but we'll we'll talk more about teams in a little bit. First, let's go ahead and jump into some matches. We're going to lead off with uh, Eternal Or versus Row. And we pick up here on turn 5. It is Volcanion versus Mega Swampert. So what Ro does is he switches out into his Abomaso to set up the hail and take away Swampert's uh, greatest asset. And that is uh, its rain speed. So uh, mm -hmm. Abomasnow, what Ro has liked doing with it so far as, as we see it uh, Mega Evolves on the uh, Pelipper coming in to revert back into the hail immediately and doing that tremendous damage with giga drain crit um mm -hmm. but what ro has loved doing is using obama snow as kind of that earthquake resist to uh really limit 
uh, what the opponent can do, especially to his more threatening mons like Coco and Vulcanion that are weak to that Earthquake. Um, even though, buddy, you still have the Chestnut. Chestnut is an Earthquake resist. But just using Obama Snow in uh, this match as um, really well as that has not or, only as the weather like, control. Yeah, weather control in this entire game, like even to the early part, just it always went back and forth, setting up rain, set like re like getting rid of it with hail. Like that's what I really love about this game, particularly just the weather control from both sides. And even the later on, after the Pelipper's gone, the Swampert coming in and clicking Rain Dance still. Mm -hmm. Just to really bring back the momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, especially uh, since Eternal Lord dropped uh, Kabutops a couple of weeks ago, Mega Swampert really being uh, that extra pressure to perform as a, a kind of a solo rain sweeper so instead of being a full-on rain team eternal or has really turned his team into more of like a team based around a rain core mm. and i i really appreciate and uh, like what he's done with that so uh this ends up being a, a four of victory for row thanks in part to um obama snow doing huge yeah. Uh, taking out the Pelipper, and it ends up being the one to take out the Slotios. Mm -hmm. Next match next... we have is RX Fades versus Baffling Amoeba. Sorry, I'm gonna kind of try it's and move on a little yep. bit. You, and we've what got I a, really we've got love in this match is uh, one of my favorite Mons putting in a lot of work, and a lot of it has to do with really solid prep on Fades' part, and unfortunately kind of bad prep on baffling amoeba's part mm. so as we see landorus sets up stealth rocks on turn two and then um predicting the encore fade switches out into manectric and i love manectric doing uh, a lot of work in this match with i think mm. it was a choice spec set with uh thunderbolt flamethrower vault switch hidden power rock i think was what the uh what the coverage was but a play mm -hmm. for baffling amoeba not putting max speed plus nature on that scullopede uh, enabling manectric to outspeed it in ko and then manectric just being able to fire off uh thunderbolts and flamethrowers getting just, a five kills up match so many kills this in this one game, only to be finished off in the end with Galvantula? Yep. Yes, correct. Galvantula. But mm -hmm. just Manectric finally having a chance to shine um, mm. always makes me happy because it's a mon that's been very near and dear to my heart since 2005. Um, yes. My first game I, being Emerald. <laughs> I really like Manectric myself. One of my favorite Megas of all the Megas in total. Oh, yeah. Awesome design, really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think but that ends up the... being a choice spec Galvantula? Because he went for Hidden Power uh, Fire on Heatran, maybe. It would have been, I believe it would have been Scarf to outspeed the main Etric. No, Galvantula outspeeds it no. naturally. 108 yeah, versus yeah. 105. I think, I think too hard into Mega Main Etric with that re really nice 135 base. Really solid. All right, yes. so yeah, as we see, Fades is able to win the match, thanks in part to Stealth mm. Rocks plus Manectric. I feel the biggest downfall there for Amoeba was the early game with Volbeat. For three turns, he just got nothing done with it at all. Yeah. And speaking of getting nothing done at all, we have Ferrothorn versus Clefable here, Shape versus Draws. Uh, once again, Shape... Staying in with Ferrothorn and just letting the opponent get set up. Missing a Power mm -hmm. Whip there was kind of big uh, because it enabled But at the same time, it, the Power Whip wouldn't have done enough damage to really be concerning for Clefable. No, it just well, it could have been, if it did, what, 20%? No, well, if it did 25%, I guess, which yeah. probably didn't. Kamo'o would have been able to kill with the Poison Jab. Mm -hmm. Which, honestly, it could have. Ferrothorn's not that weak um, on the physical attack. And Power Up is no, just no. a really good grass move. But, you know, we're able to see the Lopany 
uh, take down the Clefable with the, the fake out, and uh, Star mm -hmm. Raptor is able to come in and click close combat and um, rip a hole straight through uh, Shape's team. So mm -hmm. it was... and he and Shape really needed to conserve Ferrothorn in this match, particularly for the Suicune. Correct. Yeah. Uh, just I don't think it was the kind of set that beat Suicune one on one though. I think it was just Hazards. I don't think well, we saw Leech, Leech Seed and Seed. Power Whip. Was did that one have Leech Seed? I don't think we saw it. Uh. I don't think we saw Leech Seed. No, we didn't. It was knockoff spikes, yeah. stealth rock, and power whip. No. Yeah, so no leech, leech seed. seed would have helped, so. but power whip I can see at least three hit KOing Sweeker. Yeah, which but is if, if nice. Scald burns, it, it, it's three. just not a set. It's not a set that beats Suicune one on one. Yes. And Star Raptor is just able to come in and finish. I believe it's. Mm -hmm. I believe it was scarfed. It sh this should have been a scarf Star Raptor. Yeah. Next match we have Gino Kirby versus Etiquette. We have this uh, Zygarde 50% Dragon Dance plus one plus one versus Talonflame. Goes for the Outrage, takes out the Talonflame, and of course, uh, once again, Etiquette using um, a dragon locking itself into Outrage to bring in his Gardevoir for free. We saw it against Dragonite, against Garfield uh, a few mm. weeks ago. Like, and... early, early in the game, the Gardevoir just was such a huge threat for Gino Kirby, he had to really play around it, and just to help remove that threat mm -hmm. by getting that Kartana to safely switch in on it. Sure, it cost him his Zygarde, but his Kartana was his win condition in the end for this game, Correct. and he really played to that win condition. Mm -hmm. It also didn't hurt having Lapras being put to sleep by Secret Power, which mm. might is a bullshit maneuver. <laughs> Don't be a dick. <laughs> I I hate that. 30% chance to be put to sleep and doing mm. offensive damage. That, mm -hmm. that just sounds unfair, man. Um, oh, making a good, good play mechanics. here. Um, no, that Gengar wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Specs. Or was it? It could have been Specs. I think we, we were kind of arguing on and yeah, off whether or not, not it was Specs. Locking itself We're sure in a it's choice whether it was Shadow Ball, whether it was Specs or Scarf. Yeah. I think it might have been... I don't I know. I want to say... I wasn't looking at the calcs. I think it had to be Specs because it KO'd yeah. Nido King from 88%. Well, never mind, it was Psychic. Nido King's not the psychic. tankiest mon, and it but was Psychic, But it's not psychic, the most frail. Yes. It's, it's got like, uh, yeah. it's like 80-80-80. Which is not yeah, bad. Yeah. Honestly, if you look at Arcanine, Arcanine is only 90, 80, 80, and people still use it as a tank. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, Gina Kirby is able to, to finish up the match because Gengar can't lock itself into a single move that can KO Nido King, mm, Top again, Lulu, and Kartana. Gina Kirby played really well to his win condition. Mm -hmm. And of course, being that, um, being that Kartana. Next match. Uh, your match versus Garfield. What, what would you like to say about this match as we're staring at uh, Sigilyph v Sigilyph? So, Ditto, the biggest thing I want to bring up is Ditto's ability to just gather information. Like, I brought, I switched it in on three mons the entire game and just revealing their entire set. You can even, like, look it up, like, hover your mouse over to see the stats and that Oh, it does show the and, stats. Yeah, so oh, you can plug perfect. that in and work out EV spreads. Yeah, Ditto is pretty good on in, on info. And yeah, and um, no offense, but yeah. how well did that work for you? <laughs> uh, I looked at this Sigilyph. I see Tailwind, Energy Ball, Heat Wave, and Psy Shock. Heat Wave was my only move I can really finish it off with, which unfortunately misses. But the huge thing was actually him setting up the Tailwind. Because past that, it really just brought a lot of pressure in against me, and I just had to sack a few mons just to time out that Tailwind. Mm -hmm. And uh, another, unfortunately... Another fun thing to note about... <laughs> yeah. Another fun thing to note with Ditto is giving it hidden power. Well, 
having it transform into a hidden power mod, Ditto has its own hidden power typing still. So mm -hmm. it's like, I remember in prep I set its hidden power to steal, so if I transformed into the Diancy, I could potentially hidden power steal it. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Mm. But unfortunately, it just looks like you had no answer for Jirachi. Yeah. Unless like my... you like locked yourself into one of his one of his mons, either mm. Entei or uh, Crocodile. Crocodile was a Crocodile um, was kind of, in my opinion, the the best um, the MVP of the match, being the best. Break, oh yeah. Being able to force that Ditto into a position of um, fear, mm. and uh, just being able to deal really well with uh, even Tentacruel, uh, being able to take down Tentacruel, having um, the speed to be able to outspeed Diggersby, and being mm -hmm. able to pressure that, and of course being um, able to pressure the Ditto with the Intimidate, not being able to lock itself into physical moves. So, mm. I think really Crocodile I, was the I best definitely break. agree on that. Mm -hmm. Crocodile is so, like, I definitely misprepped against it and completely forgot early on that it even had the stealth rock. Yeah. Yeah, Crocodile is uh, another one of these really cool mons uh, because it mm. gets two really amazing abilities in Intimidate and Moxie. Being able to be mm -hmm. switched between either kind of a tank or a sweeper type is and uh, really, because really nice. Of, because of that, he can put a lot of different items on it like it wouldn't be hard to say like AV either of the choice band or choice scarfs even it can run so many different items mm -hmm. yeah and also the fact that uh, like uh, we were talking earlier about Tenacruel having a couple of really nice abilities with uh, clear uh, clear body and um, liquid, uh, ooze. liquid ooze, rain dance. They're very situational abilities, but in a draft format, those situations occur more. Exactly. Like you can prep for those situations. And that, and that's the exact same. Um, I'm gonna call hmm. it a problem that uh, I've been running into with Arcanine. That uh, you can run into with Crook sometimes is they're both such good abilities that um, it's hard to even know which one is the the perfect fit for a match. Hmm. And even on the opposite, I'll probably talk about this a bit more later, but Bronzong with Heatproof and Levitate. Not mm -hmm. that it's one that you can choose, but your opponent has to play around both. Even Heavy Metal has its chance. True, true, Heavy Slam. Heavy Slam, and Bronzong's not light to begin with, so... Mm -hmm. Getting a uh, double power, you get almost full power, heavy powers on anything that's not named Steel-type. All right, yep. next match, Battle Dolphin versus Sir Arendite. Uh, here we have a pre-marina that is pretty much played run and gun at this point. Uh, hasn't revealed an like, item, hasn't really revealed a set. It's just proof that it's not choice specs. Like, so, the entire see, game, like, correct. most of the game has just been very stally, very back and forth with the stall war. And so far, all the pre-marina has done previously is switch in, deal like click moonblast or i think that's all it actually has clicked up until this point and then just switch out so that to me sort of makes you think is it choice it could probably be choice sort of thing mm -hmm. but then going for the psychic on the amoongus as we saw and then having mm. the wakan berry to tank any one hit from kiram and being able to ko with moonblast really mm. sealed the deal because I believe that was Scarf Kiram with, like, Earth Power, Ice Beam. Which, honestly, at this point in time, Melodic was Sir Arendite's best chance of, of winning the mm. match. Melodic uh, actually beats each of these mons one-on-one, -on -one, except for um, Primarina. So, I guess the mm -hmm. priority was definitely take out the Primarina while it's in front of you. Um, I kind of find it odd... Uh, Wakan Berry, while having uh, the two ground types in Gliscor and Excadrill on your team, and I don't know. I mean, obviously it worked out in this Maybe situation. What I'm thinking is he probably prepped for, like, looking at his team. How else would 
Battle Dolphin get rid of Kiram. Like, Excadrill is probably your next best bet. Other yeah, but I mean, I guess, I guess even if uh, they're both Scarfed, Kiram wins mm. because of Earth Power. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Primarina being, uh, just finishing off the match there with a couple of well-placed moves. Really nice mm. uh, set, very solid bring just from Battle Dolphin. Played quite well, as I said, playing as if it was choice up until the opportune moments. Mm-hmm. And then uh, last match, we have uh, Roush versus Clearly Major. And uh, as you can see, we are on turn 12. We have Mama Swine versus the uh, Mega Venusaur. Roush hard switches into Florgus. And uh, I don't think we know much about this Venusaur set yet. All, all we know is that it has um... Synthesis. And he goes for Sludge Bomb, gets the Poison, which is honestly okay uh, for me. Then, um... Pretty sure the Venusaur had revealed all of its moves at this point? Was like... It... Block, oh yeah, it did, yeah, work yeah. Up. yeah. Block work up, I definitely remember, which yep. are very weird moves. Ugh, like, so usually you want to... Yeah, block being very frustrating, but at the same time, I don't think work up would have been the best payoff for the move. Like, no. I feel toxic would have been... A lot better or just anything to hit swampert because simple mm. poison coverage does leave you kind of yes. open to the swampert um and even at the same time beedrill although i can't see beedrill living like after a couple of workups it no, can still no, it, resist not. it <laughs> beedrill no. is not a resist too frail? Still i too mean frail. it is still base 80 a uh, special offense mm. but it's still not a resist so uh, mm. just kind of being extra safe, uh, me playing with my Swellow, uh, because it was my best way of beating down the Venusaur in the end, mm -hmm. having to play the spray and pray U-turn shenanigans, and then uh, picking up, uh, letting Mamoswine really pick up, pick up the slack. Uh, I'm gonna question this nasty plot turn on Thunderous because, yeah, sure it outspeeds, but. On the chance that Mamoswine isn't choiced, I shard yeah, two hit was... KOs anyway, and Landorus doesn't, or sorry, Thunderous doesn't get any priority attacks. So, two ice shards would have just finished you off anyway. I feel like maybe mm. going for Focus Blast it would was have been a better option. Like, I feel uh, there was a few times this week where a lot of people were setting up, and it wasn't really a safe time to set up or. Like, I remember uh, one of the earlier games, we didn't skip, we didn't see that part particularly, but there was a Latias that, or is it Latios? One of the Lati's clicking Carmine, it was already plus two, clicked Carmine again, where it could have gone for damage, and then it just got, just out-tempered. Mm -hmm. Like, it only got one attack off of all those boosts, which is not worth. No, no, not really. And then uh, Swellow finally getting in a position where it can uh, click the Brave Bird versus Venusaur and really uh, just clinch the match. Ugh, that one was that one was frustrating to play. Mm. And then um, my favorite my favorite part was uh, this choice bandit Swampert kill at the very end. So <laughs> I I mm -hmm. I, I kind of wanted to play for fun this um, in this match just because. It was only for differential, so <laughs> didn't really matter in the end. All right, now that we got all the matches wrapped up, let's go ahead and take a look at our power rankings, uh, getting down to the very last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, pretty much the power rankings are, are set by um, playoff positioning. So let's go ahead and take it. Um, well, I did it again. That's what I get for. Uh, that's what I get for having everything. Based Not off the most of uh, hotkeys. <laughs> so, ah, okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. So, first off, uh, Huntsville Heatran still on top. Thank Whoa, I just reverbed. Um, still on top. Hydreigon uh, having a decent week as we saw. it. Oh, it didn't pick up a kill, did it? But it didn't die. Um, mm. Swe uh, Swellow having those couple of kills. 
uh, is in a really nice position. Swampert. Um, I mean, I guess not really too much to talk about because it's the same team. Not a lot of changes. Okay, thanks. Anything that you want to add to this one? Uh, for the power rankings? Mm -hmm. Well, like, it is... It's very late in the draft league now, and because everyone's teams are set in stone, it's really hard to make changes. You mm -hmm. sort of know where a lot of people will be at at this point. Yeah. And it's not like mm -hmm. last week. Last week we had a ton of changes on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the list just because... Uh, again, like, 4th place through almost 10th are just so bunched up still. Uh, it oh, it yeah. is kind of hard to, to rank them. But uh, mm. this week, they're they pretty much... Well, I mean, obviously they stayed stagnated. No gain, no loss for anyone. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, is there anything you want to add about uh, my team? Um, I will probably go through your team later when we're looking at rosters. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Oh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look at the rosters alongside the power rankings. <laughs> okay. Um, give me a sec while I move over to... Oh, fantastic. Where, where is... Not this one. Instantly look at the... Clearly, we are the most prepared people on the planet. <laughs> Very. That's what I get for assuming you okay. understood the format. Okay. <laughs> Might be. It's, it's fine. All right. All right. So it's over. <laughs> I had mine in order of like how they show up on the spreadsheet. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna your, be skipping around. With your draft, the like you look at it and like. There's nothing really, like, you think is really strong, particularly for Draft League. Like, the biggest one there would probably be the Mamoswine. What? <laughs> but everything else is, like, they have their, they have problems built into those Pokemon, but at the same time, your team has a lot of versatility, and a lot of it can cover each other's weaknesses very well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things that I love drafting. I love drafting mons that you can use them in multiple ways. So mm. earlier, um, we were talking, I said Heatran is one of my favorite Pokemon. So you could use it either as offense, but it also has a good enough bulk that you could use it either as a special tank mm. wall or a physical tank or wall, especially with the uh, Will-O-Wisp mm -hmm. Toxic. So it, I love drafting and, mons and teams. And it is an excellent, it's a really excellent Scarf mon as well. Like, just give it a Scarf, it can outspeed a lot of things if they're not prepared for it, and it definitely has that firepower behind it. Fun fact, can't outspeed Beedrill. <laughs> Beedrill too fast. Too yep. fast, too quick. Yep. Alright. Yeah, uh, next up we have the Jim Boom and Jigglypuffs. And uh, I really, I don't like this team. There's not a lot of type versatility, as you see a lot of water, a lot of normal, a lot of fairy, mm. a I lot feel of like ground. Knowing, knowing Battle Dolphin, he probably spun the wheel to choose his picks. Uh, he actually did. <laughs> uh, yeah, he spun the I wheel feel... on like he three of that. them. Yeah. Like, yeah. He he said, "Here's a list. Randomly pick from this." <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's what happened, and that's how he ended up with Quillfish. I, I think he ended up with the uh, Quillfish, Terrakion, and whatever Mon that he traded for Zerkatree. I can't remember which one that was, but th uh, those three were kind of rando picks. But mm -hmm. he's played really well with them. Uh, yep. The biggest, the biggest thing that is really good for his team is yes, he's got the Audino Mega which is decidedly the worst mega but because it is a full support mega the upside on it though is he's got a lot of big heavy hitters on his team he's got the trachean he's got the zerka tree he's got pre marina if he wants to chuck a, a specs on which is super spooky just to calc against 
I used uh, I used Primarina in another mm. one of my uh, draft leagues. Um, I found I didn't have nearly as much success with it. Mm. Uh, but he's he's doing really well with it. He's he's got a yeah. a supporting cast that really feeds off of it, and it feeds off of them. So mm. despite the he's fact that getting really these rando bulky picks, mons. Mm -hmm. He's really got a, a nice bulky type offense, and he's got a couple of fast mons, mm. so he's not too concerned with uh, speed control. It's not as big of mm. an issue. Especially when you have best defogger Gliscor. Gliscor yep. being really good. Rotom Wash, a really nice defogger. Excadrill Rapid Spinner. Just and uh, just remember the thing with Gliscor is in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, because Defog became a tutor, it can finally get that Poison Heal and yep. Defog. Yep. So it's it's a really nice mod, and as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. it is his team MVP. Oh, he's, he's got 11 mm -hmm. kills with it. So, okay. yeah, 11 kills and 5 survivals is, yeah, is pretty, yeah. pretty solid, actually. Averaging more than a mm -hmm. kill per match. Is uh, pretty darn good. All right, next mm -hmm. up we have the uh, Caledonia Deerling and Garfield the Lightning. This team, I really don't like it as, uh, that well. I love it even less since he traded away um, Rotom Cut for Sigilyph because he has this kind of a um, a hazard issue because his best yes. really heavy hitters are Dragonite and Entei. Both being weak to the stealth rocks and not having and the Dragonite, best hazard clearing. Uh, Dragonite especially because it has multi-scale, which, which drops alongside it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does have the Mega Diancy to kind of counter this fact, but unless mm. you lead with it, um, you're really in a position to, get ro um, to have mm. rocks set up against you early on in the match. Mm -hmm. So the fact that his only uh, defoggers are... Sigilyph and Dragonite, and he has no Rapid Spinners, means that uh, a lot of the time Dragonite is going to be losing that multi-scale before it even mm. has a chance to to the, really take advantage of it. The funny, like, going back to my game with it, the prep I did for Diancie is hope that it did mega early, in that my Ditto then can switch in onto it, turn into it, then Magic Bounce back Stealth Rocks. Okay. It would have been the sickest play, but very greedy, I guess. Mm -hmm. And something to note about that other defogger, uh, Sigilyph, although it gets uh, magic, magic guard and being able to be immune from hazards and mm -hmm. uh, the like, it still is not a good defogger. It doesn't yeah. have the staying power well, I... to really take in. It's better suited for kind of a, a, a stall breaker or a revenge type role. Mm. So, just no good hazard clearing. He's got the, great speed tiers the, at the top. Yes, like his but... speed tiers are so good. Like, there's only three mons that are in, like, the mid to low speed tier. Mm -hmm. All the rest are 90 plus. And they've got good enough bulk at the same time that he's mm. not really weak to, like, a trick room team. Uh, he has enough mm -hmm. staying power. Uh, to kind of fend off against that, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really nice coverage, a uh, 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 spectacular mix of types here. Um, really preventing opponents from clicking uh, just the same coverage moves. So it really mm -hmm. forces extra prep, so that part I really mm -hmm. enjoy. But that, uh, yes. that hazards issue, although it hasn't really shown up as much, could be uh, a problem going into playoffs mm. here in the next couple I of feel games. like the thing with hazards is this league in general doesn't feel like hazards is really emph emphasized enough on a lot of people's radar. No, probably not. I, mm. I'm, I'm going to agree with that one. And Arr. it is very spooky to set up hazards against a Diancy Mega it if is. it's not it 10 is. 1. Mm. Mm. All right. Uh, fourth ranked, uh, we have the Broward Bray Looms and Coach Rowe. Really threatening offensive team. Uh, one of the best offensive cores with Kokolucha. A couple of really nice defensive mons with Don Fan Chestnut, Tanky Mew. Uh, 
Another sweeper type with Linoon, although it is significantly overshadowed by Kokolucha. Volcanion, very spectacular wall breaker. Um, Bronzong, very nice wall. Just kind of a, an interesting team dynamic that he's got going on mm. and how his ingenuity has really made uh, this team work. I, I can appreciate a good builder and uh, mm. being one of the guys who's lost tremendously to him. Uh, I can appreciate all the prep and uh, creativity that he brings to the table. Mm. It is a real shame that Linoon has only came to one game and died. Like, if, like, late game, Linoon, if you can get it set up, it can just run through a team very quickly. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like, me personally, I don't like Linoon as much in a draft format because there's so many ways to counter it. I mean, uh, getting Stomping Tantrum last generation was uh, really good mm. for it in terms of the coverage department. Now you have mm -hmm. stuff like uh, Gunk Shot, Shadow Claw, Seed Bomb to go along with uh, your powerful extreme speed. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, um, for Moose Slot Syndrome, if you're running Linoon, chances are it's Belly Drum. So that's already a move slot gone. Fall no you're limited yeah, in your fall items. Yeah, Syndrome isn't as hard in Draft League, though, because you don't need, like, all four moves, at, like, versus a single roster. You only pick whatever you need, and if you really desperately need a move, you might, like, if you're having issues picking the four moves, you can usually just supplement it with another mod with the same type of coverage. Yeah. But in terms mm. of what I'm saying is, in terms of like using Line Noon as an end uh, as an end goal, you can kind of think about what coverage moves Line Noon might have, and it's a lot easier to counter if uh, mm. you're able to think in that in that respect. That's yeah, that's if all you're I able to prep against it that well. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then uh, Obama Snow, uh, kind of being, I don't know, I'm gonna call it Rose Secret Weapon. Um, using yeah. it both for I think, support again, and this offense week, at the same time. This week it was used really well to control the weather, and definitely big kudos on that. I think another a mod I really want to talk about is actually the Coco. Like, it is a huge, devastating mod, but at the same time, because it is such a huge threat a lot of the time, it really paints a target on itself. It's like how do you beat this and like i've done very like in a previous draft uh, the interesting way i have like dealt with it is actually with a mon you don't expect i've done it with a pelipper with a sash and actually running quick attack on that last spot Ooh. okay mm -mm. nice so uh, it's just... nice wingle level 40 is it level 40 <laughs> Or it, get, it, it gets like pursued yeah. or quick attack. One of them's thirty. One of them's yeah. forty. <laughs> that, that's I. It's it's a unique take like, on it. Hmm. Like I just noticed that the surf and was only just bringing it to that lower health. That quick attack was all I needed for that final hit. Yeah. I mean, Pelipper getting a drizzle really boosted it because as a as a flying type with that 90 base special attack, getting those hurricanes, um, burp mm -hmm. spam is still really powerful. And then boosting mm. scald, hydro pump, surf, all three it gets, um, just making it into an offensive presence of itself that uh, sometimes doesn't even need uh, supporting mm. cast of, of Rainmons, uh, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk. We'll talk more about Pelipper yeah. coming up here in a little bit. Later, it, it's later. Not, it's I'm mainly too, the main point here is Coco can present itself as a target, mm -hmm. which is why it has so much deaths. Where comparably on the same roster, Volcanion there, who has like just around the same amount of kills, has only three deaths. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with how uh, he's used Obama Snow as kind of that earthquake mm. resist. Yes, so, yes. I mean, I don't agree with it, but it's working well for him so far. Mm -hmm. We'll see. A, uh, I expect him to go far in a playoff, so we'll see that. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Gino Kirby. Uh, Gino has been surprising me this entire league. 
Um, I kept feeling like he would fade into obscurity uh, once he got into some of the more difficult matches, but he really hasn't. He's yeah, been hanging he's been in there playing and doing really, really well. well. Mm -hmm. mm. Like, playing really well into his Kartana this week was really nice, and he's got a lot of good late-game sweepers that can set up, like his Zygarde and his Feraligator, although his Feraligator has only been in one game. It's brought game. to one match, but it, it won yeah, the match. It, yeah. So it's just really using... Uh, mons to their potential. We see Toxapex there has uh, six passive kills. Uh, Toxapex mm -hmm. being uh, pretty much the defensive glue for the team. Uh, it actually forms a decent core with Bulu Zygarde because it resists uh, ice, poison, um, and then of course Bulu resisting the dragon that Zygarde doesn't really like taking. So the three of them working together make kind of a, a, mm. an interesting bulky core um, with mm -hmm. Zygarde and Bulu being able to apply uh, really nice offensive pressure with uh, Thousand Arrows, Wood Hammer respectively. Mm. And the Bulu setting up grassy terrain, like a lot of his team absolutely loves his grassy terrain. Like even looking past the grass types, Kartana and Swordsbuck, but even a lot of the mons that are naturally weak to ground. Like, like his Camerupt. Mega, Camerupt, Kling Klang, Nidoking, even his Toxapex. A lot of them really appreciate having grassy terrain up. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, really amusing if you think about it. Bulu was uh, a free agency pick re uh, really late. Um, mm. I would have picked Bulu, but at the end, I, I, I just needed a, a fly and resist. But Bulu is... <laughs> A tremendous mon and it's it's a really mm. nice glue uh and then it's it really it's benefits cartana too getting yeah. leaf blade sweeps at the end mm -hmm. and just going back to it was a free agency pick it's interesting to see that bulu is so late pick where a lot of drafts they really want their tapus just to either have the train or deal with other tapus terrains Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like remove their terrain, and oh, there was one other one. I really want to talk about Zygarde. Zygarde doesn't seem like it, but it is such a hard mod to actually prep against in the team building phase, because Thousand Arrows removing flying just it makes it so hard. Like you need specifically a grass type, otherwise you have no good bug. switching bug. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Which unfortunately, yeah, most of the good bugs were already taken, <laughs> <laughs> and you know the story mm -hmm. behind that one. So uh, I just see one guy with a full bug roster. Yeah. I don't know the full story, unfortunately. Oh well, he's uh, he's like the bug champion. He's. Mm-hmm. Bug Although, is his I favorite. Think, his... Was it... I'm thinking, was it you who took away the biggest thing from, from yes, him? Yes, I did. That I... I did. The Fortress. The Fortress, yes. Yeah. Uh, like, I, was, I was planning on doing when I, uh, having When I was looking at his team, time. it's like, oh, he doesn't have Fortress. And that would have been like having having a rapid spinner specifically because sticky web is, is so good in a lot of fights but it's like you're stuck on default unless you want to take rocks mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. so uh yeah let's go ahead and jump into your team right now okay. as we we can see uh you kind of you took over from missile sticks after week mm -hmm. five yes yes one of the weeks. Yeah, it was the week five. biggest thing, like for me to rebuild his team, his team was missing a lot of very core types. Like he didn't have a fantasy core. He didn't have a fire type. He didn't have an electric type. He didn't have a ground type. And it's like all of these types are so useful for a draft. Mm -hmm. Being able to mm. uh, really synergize defensively. Hmm. Which it's where you mentioned this, like when we were talking a bit earlier, how he had a like a hyper offensive roster, and then when I've taken over, I've just added Celesteela and the Rosom Heat, and now it's a really strong 
now it has a really strong defensive core with those two and the tentacruel yeah so what what do you like the most about your team um like again the control as like the control stall style is probably it's a style i really have a lot of success with even though my preferred style is actually volt turn but i still love my stall style of play having them on stick in and just stay and just cause residual damage throughout a game okay and that really shows a lot in my play style with celesteel and tentacruel particularly and with those two they like another huge thing is information like i talked to this talked about this earlier with ditto how you get so much information just even like half the games you want to just lead with it just to see your entire opponents one mon yeah and just and get that, that can make a difference in a match which mm. is completely the different time, than the way i would use ditto so the way mm. i like using ditto whenever i whenever i do use it I like using it um, kind of to pressure my opponent uh, into kind of a mind game situation. So instead of mm. me using it for information building in the early game, I like saving it for late game to psych everybody out. So uh, even just using Ditto in a different manner is mm. really impressive. It can still do that in the late game, even if it's scouting in the early game. Like, having it to switch in on set, like, mons that are heavily set up, can just steal all of their buffs and still be faster because usually it has that scarf on it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I really want to bring out with the, like, the information game is, again, with Celesteel and Tentacruel, I've used it heaps, using the move Protect a lot. Like, just scouting a move out just to see what your opponent will do. Like, I remember in a game versus Shape, where I clicked Protect against his Typhlosion, and in, and on that turn, his Typhlosion went for Hidden Power rather than the usual Eruption. It's like, I know that thing is choice, so I should just stay in. His Hidden Power is not going to hurt Celesteela, and it worked out really well. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, I think I think opponent. a lot of what you're talking about really stems from you have a. It sounds like kind of an extensive VGC background. Yeah. So you bringing that kind of play style and mm. really, dare I say, making it work here in singles, I think is is impressive. Hmm. Like. In VGC, you generally have the three games to gather your information, and even VGC is very different because a lot of the time you save text for game two or game three, where in this, you've got to save your text until late game, of course. It condenses the VGC format in a way. And I've got to play to that style, I guess. And that's I think, what I think I'm doing. that's kind of interesting. They're definitely hmm. uh, playing outside of your typical comfort zone, if you will. Yeah, I I did start off with singles, but I am mainly focused on VGC for the past few years, yes. Gotcha. Alright, 7th rank, uh, the Blackpool Blastoise. You suck, draws. Bring your Shaman, bring <laughs> your Galilane. Please. Please. I'm tired of being a broken record. Hell, even bring Ambipom once for me, eh? Do, do something different for a change. Cause bringing... He's only ever brought seven mons the entire league, which is very Also, fun to I note, guess? fun to note, something that I guess I, I never noticed before. That Charizard mm -hmm. has been brought to every single match. <laughs> that Charizard still is killless. Yep, and that's so... Like, Zard is such a strong setup mon, and it has such a ridiculous dual stab that's only resisted by three mons and that's your fairy water types bring your grass of your fire water grass cord mm -hmm. not really much to talk about here other than uh you've been playing one dimensionally mm, with the, the three, other with thing the three dimensional to... team you've been playing in one dimension 
Mm -hmm. One thing that I do want to bring up is he does have very odd Z mods. Like, he could... Like, the mod that really actually shoots out to me as a okay Z mod for his team is actually the Nidder Queen. Because it is a Gen 1 mod, and Gen 1 mods get, like, all your bolt beams and flamethrowers. It's like... Well, I think that kind of so takes away from the, the, the Sheer Force, the Sheer Force Life Orb, and the ability to switch moves up, and mm. I, I don't know. Uh, I think I mean, Suicune yeah. is not a good Z-mon, um, but honestly, There's... Gallade is probably the best Z-user on his team. Yes, yes. I could even see, um, well, maybe not Magnezone the way he's played, but even Star Raptor can take advantage of a Z-Crystal uh, being mm -hmm. able to go for maybe a Phytanium Z and saving those defense mm -hmm. drops from close combat for the future. And it gives you an extra power point because close combat only has eight. So even having a ninth could prove pivotal in a match. Yes. Like, uh, mm -hmm. And even even just clicking all out pummel instead of close combat just to not get the defenses drops either as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really I mean. strong point. Or uh, for Brave Bird uh, or Double Edge, being able to take mm -hmm. away those that recoil damage, maybe getting an extra hit in uh, with Star Raptor being useful, especially 120 attack is nothing to uh, to turn mm. away from. Just really, really powerful. Although it does take away the Reckless on the, the former yeah. two moves, but or the latter two moves. I Again, still think just... as, as a Z uh, user, Star Raptor is, is uh, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, next up we have the yeah. Paris Saint-Germain RX Fades. Uh, probably one of the, the most threatening teams in this entire... In Sorry, this entire just tournament. Um, over to but it. just yeah. haven't been able to convert them into wins. Landris mm. Therian, uh, Slowbro Tangrowth, but... you have Heatran, uh, Mega Scizor, Klefki, Crobat... All of these really solid mons, and even Whimsicott being there uh, to, as a, a nice little tie-in with both uh, mm -hmm. speed tiers. Like, I love his roster. Like, out of everyone's roster, his is probably my favorite, even beyond mine. Because, I, again, I love that Volturn core he has. has the Scizor, he has the main Etric, and at the same time, he's got a lot of mons that work really well by pivoting into each other. Like, the Scizor, weak to fire types, springs in the Heatran, get the flash fire boost. And then he's got the Landorus on top of that as well. Mm -hmm. And It's, it's a pity just... it doesn't have a double Intimidate core. That would be that would be mm. something. If Although, he had, like, a he second does have, Intimidate. He does have Regenerator cores, and those can be so painful. Mm -hmm. Just them switching between each other or just being able to pivot out again between his the rest of his roster. It's such... It can be so hard to break. Yeah. Again, I love his Ross. It's really fun. Oh, I love it too. It's, it also features a couple of my favorite mons, and he mm -hmm. he did steal them from me. He knew. Uh, he knows <laughs> that I love Manectric. He knows that mm -hmm. I love Heatran, and he he told me after the draft. He, I specifically drafted Heatran to take it away from you. And actually, mm. I I was the one who told him to pick up Manectric because I felt like it. Uh, really added to, like you were saying, he's got a decent Volturn core so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I just felt like Minectric was uh, gave him an extra little bit of coverage there um, mm -hmm. with the electric type because he needed one. And uh, like, it's I'm worked thinking out. Back to the, I'm thinking back to one of my original teams back in Gen 4. It featured not Minectric but Jolteon. And yep. it pretty much served the same sort of purpose, where it mm -hmm. switches in on an electric attack, because my my core back then was like Scizor, Heatran, and then Heatran being weak to ground, I had a Gyarados on that slot. Ooh. And then that again is weak to electric, so Jolteon came in. And yeah. it's like Manetric can serve that exact same purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the old uh, Gearvire combo from Generation 4. If uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've been around that long. Electivire's motor, motor drive. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. man, that was that was the that was the beginnings of uh, my competitive experience. It was way back then. My favorite mod used to be mm -hmm. Aerodactyl Lead. Yeah, Aerodactyl Lead was so stuff good. Stuff like uh, Crunch Pursuit, I've... Stealth Rocks Taunt. 
Mm, for, for me, my favorite lead is actually Azelf back in Gen 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, And Azelf hey, I have that too. to play around with. Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have the Wolverhampton Waddlers. Yes. All right. Baffling Amoeba the Bug Team. Awesome. I love your mm -hmm. mons. Bring your sticky webs. Take it away. Uh, again, it's such like you did a really good pickup, taking away that fortress from him. I wasn't doing so... it for that. I wanted I. It worked <laughs> with my uh, fairy it's dragon mons, steel. Really, true. <laughs> mm -hmm. But taking it away from like that core, like he again really wants to keep up sticky webs and want to keep away the stealth rock and there's no other like fortress is by far the best rapid spinner for that and it's not there mm -hmm. and really only um well he's got a couple of defoggers what's he got yeah uh, venomoth scissor yeah he's he's got a lot of defoggers but some matches you want to again keep up the sticky webs mm -hmm. but not get but also get rid of your stealth rock it's like to me i value having a mix of both rapid spinners and defoggers yeah mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's one of the reasons why i like my team though is i, mm. I have that nice mix unfortunately another thing uh, about losing out on fortress is uh, his only stealth rocker is that pincer so it pretty much guarantees that he's not going to have rocks on the field because it takes mm -hmm. away an all-important move slot from Pinsir, whether it be coverage, return, maybe even sword stance, um, just limiting what it can do in a match by having mm -hmm. to take um, stealth rocks. Uh, something that I noticed, uh, Meebs, that you haven't really been doing is Scullopede is actually a fantastic hazard setter with both the toxic mm -hmm. spikes and... Um, the regular spikes. Regular spikes are really nice for picking up nice quick chip even, because even one Even if you're just 12%. able to pick up the... Even if you're only able to set up the one spikes, if your opponent is switching a ton, or even just switching at all, which, hey, happens a lot, it's just good residual chip damage that they have to keep a track on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I feel like you just haven't been using some of your mons uh, to the greatest of their ability. Mm. Like I said, so uh, I've talked to you a bunch of times, greatest... man. Buzzwool. Mm. Yeah, for me, the biggest one that shoots out for me on that is actually Sizzle. Like, again, back to my original team, it's like Sizzle is one of my favorite mons that I use in singles. Like, I picked it up on a previous draft and it was so fun to just... For it to come in and play the whole mind game of the opponent is am i gonna bullet punch you are you gonna switch out and i'm am i going to beat whatever's switching in or am i gonna pursue you on your switch it's just bring in sizzle play a mind game and win it and that's something i've just really enjoyed about sizzle and really can excel at mm -hmm. all right uh next up we have rain team the bludgeoners and coach eternal lore um, really losing, uh, Kabutops, dropping it for Alolan Marowak, I, I still don't agree with that on the whole. He hasn't, he but... hasn't brought Marowak much, but honestly, I do like the Marowak on his team. I think... I like it on his team, when I just like to... Uh, it works Kabutops really well more. with his... Mm. I felt like maybe, maybe yeah. Toxicroak would have been better to to drop instead of um uh kabu tops mm. i think toxic Croak is it's a very interesting one because it's very different it like there's not many with that same with the same type in fact nothing Two of really the best offensive mind. types out there with poison mm. and fighting especially with yeah. the advent of fairies Mm -hmm, I guess exactly. maybe that's why why he has it. I guess he doesn't really have good uh, good ways to deal with fairies. Mm. Really getting it to take advantage of a dry skin under the rain. Pretty good. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, he didn't, like, in this week, he didn't prep for it in that he did prep for it, but he didn't change its ability over to the dry skin. Like, 
I saw it early game switch into a water move, which Dry Skin would have healed it, but oh, it just yeah. dropped. That's true. Mm. Yeah. So just uh, got to be really you careful just... on your mm. prep, making sure that like, you have the done, right sets. Like I've done. I've been very close a few times with the Superior because it just automatically goes to Overgrowth, and it's like, wait a second, that's not contrary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been very devastating if I don't mi if I don't catch that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, of otherwise, I love this team. It's got a great balance of uh, both bulk and offense. Mm. You got stuff like Tapu Fini, Latias being great uh, complements to each other. Uh, Latias mm -hmm. being weak to stuff like um, the Dark, uh, weak to Dragon. Weak to ice, Tapu Fini resists all of them. Fini being weak to mm -hmm. uh, poison that Latias just really takes on with the the psychic mm -hmm. offensive coverage. Fini also being weak to electric and grass, both of which Dragon resists. So as as a combo, they work really well with each other. Mm -hmm. And getting that Misty Surge, um, preventing Latias from getting statused, is uh, really important. Uh, actually, I beg your pardon. Let's try this again. All the under gravity conditions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Latias can still get uh, status. But, mm -hmm. you know, Another, I mean, they still work mon... together defensively. Yes, yes. The Amon, I really want to see him use a bit more, is actually the Kingdra. Like, it's been brought it to four games, but it's only got two KOs, but it can be very strong in the weather. And he has definitely shown he can control his weather very well. And he's been doing such a good job of that as of late. Well, unfortunately, with the, with the, with the Kingdra bit, um, matches mm -hmm. that he has brought it, I, one of them was versus me. Uh, I just uh -huh. uh, People just have so solid a counter to Kingdra. Kingdra mm -hmm. is not nearly as powerful as Mega Swampert. And unfortunately, with... Um, only base 95 special attack, you're kind of forced yeah. to run either life orb or choice specs to be able to boost its power. Do and damage. in doing so, yeah. you either have to lock Another... yourself into a move mm. or be forcing yourself to lose Ooh. HP, which Kingdra desperately needs because it um it has a uh, decent enough another ball. another thing that it can really make use of is a Z crystal, but it's not a Z Mon, but Another thing, I really want to talk about Z-Crystals and Raichu, especially. Like, I was very scared when I was prepping against him for his Z-Stoke Spark Surfer. Like, I only had one switch into that. And, at like, he didn't... He, like, I don't think I've seen it yet. He probably has brought it in an earlier week before I've joined. So, I, I haven't seen it. I don't remember. But he's been using uh, Z-Decidui quite well. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely give him good kudos for that, but Raichu has a lot of good Z moves, like Spark Surfer, the, like, I verse someone in VGC often, he uses Z Spark Surfer, Alola Raichu, and the biggest thing for it in VGC is even if you protect, start the Spark Surfer, still goes through it, hits them, and it still has that 100% paralysis, which is so... It's ah. so hard to deal with. That's what makes it so tricky. The 100% paralysis just removes your speed. I guess that kind of makes sense because, uh, um, mm. what is it? Which one is it? It's either 10,000 volt or Catastropeca has that, uh, plus two critical hit ratio mm. on that move. One only. of those two, but those are Pikachu exclusive. Mm -hmm. And then, mm. uh, I guess, uh, a but little, even... uh, right. A little. Another another thing to bring up with Raichu Z-Move options is Event Pikachus, because there's Event Pikachus with Surf, and a really funny one with Fly, so you have those as options for your, for your Z-Moves, which can be can really surprising. Can you use them with Alola Raichu, though? You should be able to, because all you need to do is evolve a Pikachu in Alola for the Alola Raichu. Alright, mechanics. Learning something new mm -hmm. every day. So that is the bludgeon. Raichu. Ugh. I mean, even though it's only base 85 attack, that still is kind of iffy yeah. to think about. Because one of the mods of that nowhere. you want to switch in is grass type to it. Mm -hmm. 
So getting getting that. Oh man, jeez, I'm so glad he didn't think of that uh, versus me. That's mm. yikes. That would have taken away my Verizian right quick. Mm -hmm. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, Kentucky Fried Crawdon. I love this team. Um, I love to hate it, but I love it. He's got a really cool mod in Clay Doll. I love that he picked it up and has been able to use it with, with relative success, uh, if I do say so myself. He's got mm -hmm. Amongus, I one do. of my favorite mons of all time. Agron, mm -hmm. another one of my favorite mons. And Agron is a really good Mega 4 draft league, mainly because it's so good for its value. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because what is it? Plus, it's. Yeah, it's, it's plus points. For mm. Mega Agron, and, and it's still a really decent Mega. Mm -hmm. It's it. got uh, offensive press, uh, presence with the Earthquake uh, Heavy Slam with the base 140 attack. It's got the defensive presence with the Filter ability and uh, base mm -hmm. 70 and base uh, base 70 HP and base 80 special defense. So it's not weak in that aspect, and it really is. Uh, a solid glue pick, uh, Melodic mm. and Mega Agron being good solid glue picks. Unfortunately, uh, with your bulky Mons, Amungus really being the only electric resist, or, well, I mean, Claydol, Claydol yeah, has Claydol. so many weaknesses that it's kind of hard to use as an electric I feel Claydol's, Claydol's big thing is that it has two very interesting immunities. It's immune to electric and ground, which you saw back over at the, like, the moves. Mm -hmm. The big two moves up at the top is Earthquake and Thunderbolt. Yeah. And being able to set up rocks for him. I, I, uh, when mm -hmm. uh, he was looking... Set up and spin. Mm -hmm. So when uh, he was looking at what to do with his um, last two free agent picks, Claydol, um, came to mind and i said yeah you should really get clay dog because uh before mm. that mega agron was really his only rock setter so mm. opponents would automatically assume and sometimes he would have to just force uh, a move slot to be dedicated to uh stealth rocks and that mm. really uh hinders mega agron uh, but this stall core with mega agron at its center is really fun to watch yeah he uh, has one of my favorite things really... that he's done so far was mm. uh use umbreon in conjunction with the agron to really heal it so he's done rest mm. heal bell he's done wish a couple of times and so just using each like, of these stall mons to bounce off one... of each other like, that is his biggest boon on his roster. He's got a really strong defensive core with a ton of recovery to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Recover, Melodic, Moonlight, Wish, Umbreon, uh, Regenerator, Regenerator Among Among Us, uh, Roost, Togekiss, Wish, Togekiss. Don't forget that it gets Wish, too. Mm. Base 85 Wishes is not, is not bad. Uh, especially when you're looking at uh, the rest of his team and... Um, they all fall around a similar HP range, so stuff like mm. Clay Doll and Mega Agron are really getting uh, boosts from that kind of uh, that kind of healing, and mm. Clay Doll just being a nice support glue, as you said, being immune to the two most um, common offensive attacking types mm -hmm. in Earthquake and uh, Thunderbolt. I just feel a really solid team. Yeah, but just he's... looking at my notes. The biggest thing is, like, a lot of his mons are just very passive, though. Like, mm -hmm. the big defensive walls. Yeah. And that's where I feel they do fall a lot short. Yeah. Like, he definitely... He has the huge wall breaker in Kyurem and Lucario. But he's also only got that one fast mon in Alakazam. Yeah. Like, the rest of his roster is below 100. His next fastest is that Kyurem. Yeah. And that's these are issues that he is going to need to deal with. Yeah. But uh, I, I personally, uh, I think that maybe in a future draft, this is uh, one of Sir Arendite's 
first ventures into competitive mm. Pokemon. So as uh, mm -hmm. he's really been able to learn the format kind of around this mm -hmm. stall passive, and it's maybe in the future like we'll get to see stall, some better. Stall roster in draft formats can be so frustrating to deal with when played well. And at the same time, they're really good for learning, learning competitive really well. Because the games last longer so that you learn a lot more of the game, sort of. Mm -hmm. Like, because the games last longer, you learn more, sort of thing. You get more situations to learn. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. uh, another kind of example of this, as we move on to the next uh, pick, has been the Pacific Log Waylords in Coach Etiquette. Uh, he really hasn't uh, uh, done a lot of competitive Pokemon battling, um, but he's a very, very talented and dedicated Gen uh, Gen One speedrunner, and it really shows mm -hmm. um, him being uh, really using Lapras as his his mvp um mm -hmm. but unfortunately uh, not a lot of other mons have been able to to shine he has three wins but he only has seven survivals so not a lot of um we're really showing inexperience but as he's gone on if you take a look at that team schedule his first few matches were absolute um ass beatings if you will but then he started playing better and better as the season's mm. gone on and uh, especially with the the latest match against the camden cryogonals he hung in there really well against one of uh, the best battler and builders in this entire league mm. i feel like just being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everyone right now um is is really impressive Given, yeah, again, he has, how he started. He's definitely learned. He, like, I feel he's some, he's learning a lot from each battle, and especially this one where he learned that the how Gale Wings on Talonflame got changed over when it moved over to Gen Seven. Mm -hmm. Some things to note about uh, his team specifically. I love, um, I love the Sun Core, but it's not enough. I really wish that you drafted around Tyranitar a little better. Um, now, granted, that's probably inexperience mm. showing out there, um, but drafting around Tyranitar can be really scary because of how versatile T-Tar can be. Bulky, mm. offensive, um, and how many support. Like even not only the versatile of Tyranitar, but the versatility of the mons that you would naturally want to draft with the Tyranitar as well. Like mm -hmm. the Excadrill comes to mind instantly. Yep. But of course, that's always a very contested pick, so hard to really assure. But yeah, it's like there's a lot you can go with it, and a lot of steel types can go with it quite well. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the Skarmory pick kind of... I don't know. I, I don't think that Skarmory was necessarily as good a pick to go along with Tyranitar because you ended up having Tyranitar and Torkoal, which mm, kind of play the similar way. Mom. Yeah, very physically defensive. Uh, I just mm. feel like uh, you could have drafted around that a little bit, um, a little bit differently. I'm really mm. sad because um, a couple of the mons that he dropped, he dropped Cresselia and Chandelure. Uh, so Chandelure, along with the Torkoal, mm. was really threatening, um, especially week one versus me. Uh, that was one of the things that stopped me from, from really sweeping, was he had a Choice Scarf Chandelure, and the Torkoal mm. set up the sun, and now all of a sudden, like, wow, your Fire Blast kills me. Um, <laughs> yep. So... Uh, it's really losing that kind of pressure and Cresselia mm -hmm. being such a kind of an annoying mon. Uh, you had a, a nice stall core early on in the season, but I mean, you chose to shy away from that. And yeah, I can respect that. Mm -hmm. But I really uh, I, I want to see mon, you do I, well. A mon I really want to talk about really quickly Haxorus. Haxorus, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is probably. Mm, it's definitely up there on his better draft mons, 
And yes. Like, it's a great it's value such... pick. Personally, oh, yeah. I like Haxorus as a tier 2 pick. Uh, but mm. no, it's a tier 3 pick. So I think it's got tremendous value. I think it's in the top the, 5 tier the 3 funniest, The funniest thing is actually Mold Breaker. Mold Breaker is so... It's one of those abilities you don't think about, but it's super useful in draft because it's, so it's like good. you can break through sturdy with it for instance you can break through immunities most of the time levitates it the... gets earthquake mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly the funniest one however is chucking a taunt on it can allow it to taunt magic bounce mons oh for real yeah so oh it's yeah like... wow so it's like oh hey sableye doesn't matter Okay, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Like, that's... And I think Haxorus is the only, like, the I think best it's the, yeah. user of that. It may be the only one. Might be the only one, but I don't want to be certain on that. Yeah. I don't know, maybe... I don't think... I don't know, but... that's that's something to look up for the future. That's... <laughs> that's... Mm. I never thought of that before. Hmm. Uh, and I it's mean... like... I know previously when we, like, in a previous draft league, for one thing I've done is actually put a sash on a sturdy mon just to play around the mold breaker, which is so funny and just counterintuitive, but hey, it did it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's that's the cool yeah. thing about draft format is mm -hmm. uh, using creativity to really take advantage mm -hmm. of it. All right. Flavortown Flygon's getting down to the final two. Um, I like your draft, kind of. I don't like the way you've played it. I don't like how you've I feel kind of his, used the same even mons. His draft does have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. You kind of drafted a lot of uh, similar types. You got a lot of steals, a lot of fighting, mm. a couple of dark and I, types. And to even go along with all the similar types is you use, like... A lot of the, his mons are just, like, a lot of his teams is Lando, Pharaoh, Typhlosion, Lopunny, Sharpedo, and something else. It's usually those five and something. Yeah. And it's like, there's a lot of mons we want you to use, which are really nice to use. Like, I want to see more Dusclops. Dusclops is such a strong tank. It can take a hit really well. Sure, it's very one-dimensional again, but... It can just be a really good switch in if you need that switch in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it actually works. You know, it's something that I wasn't uh, thinking earlier. It, it, it kind of works really well in conjunction with Ferrothorn, uh, being mm. able to tank that fighting uh, weakness really well, because a lot mm -hmm. of teams are going to be packing either fire or fighting coverage for mm -hmm. that Ferrothorn, and Dusclops. Uh, being so bulky, being able to take on those fire type moves, and um, especially being able to take on fighting types, and any non guts fighting type is gonna fear that Dusclops Will O Wisp. So, a couple of things to note there that I wasn't thinking about until you brought it up mm. earlier. But I'm, I, I kind of like this team. I just wish that you had dropped Regigigas. <laughs> Yes. I hate it. Regigigas Terrible. doesn't do anything. No. But, I mean, at least you like, were at least you favorite... were good enough to realize it quickly. He brought it to the mm. first match and never again. And it's like you I'm pretty sure I remember he still hasn't done any trades and it is a bit of a shame that you didn't try to attempt to trade out some mons. The mons that weren't working out as well or would need to bring in certain situations. Mm -hmm. All right. Last and just, and... I want to quickly just talk about Lopunny. Lopunny is such an amazing oh, mega it mon. Is good. It is. Like that's another dual stab mon that has a really good like offensive presence because of its dual stab and scrappy getting mm -hmm. around the usual ghost resists, well, immunes. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's it's an underrated it's an underrated mega. I I don't I know think it's, it's, it's underrated I... at all. I think it's, like, people know it's a good mon, and it's mm -hmm. like, I've picked it round one previously, and it is, it's such a good mon. 
especially with that base 135 speed uh, 136 mm. attack is sneaky powerful too oh um, yeah like, especially once you add in of, priority moves like time. fake out quick attack uh mm -hmm. being able to even circumvent Just scarfers and having that raw break, power breaking sashes breaking dragon knights multi-scale things like that and then it's oh there was something else just it's so fast yeah the dual stab of high jump kick and return like it's so hard to find a mon that can live either of those hits mm -hmm. mm. all right and last and certainly least is the oakland adaptability <laughs> you're gone yeah yeah yep, sorry gone. i love i love Unfortun playing as your team though thanks major thanks for yeah. the team i love playing as it it's been a lot it's been real the... mm -hmm. <sighs> I like the few things I want to say about the team. It's got really good leads, lead options in Infernape, Garchomp, and Thunderous. They're all really strong lead options for the team. Even Armaldo can make a, a strong presence as a lead option, uh, maybe mm. even a suicide lead. I... Yeah. <laughs> and what? one thing, have you have you noticed? This team has one of every type and one of every type. It has no double ups at all. It's just oh, all 18 types one, two, are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Wow. Mm. Oh no, he's missing one. Is he missing one? Is no. It, is no, that 18? There's yeah. 18. Wow. I didn't notice that. I've been playing as this I... team for the last five <laughs> weeks and I never noticed this. Mm -hmm. Huh. I didn't notice it until like very late in my like just briefly looking up his team is like there's one of each type huh no double ups it's like that is so just i'm sure you never have rare. that happen you never have that happen in a draft I, format i don't i haven't seen it yet but there it is now. wow mm -hmm. and it's not like it's not like they're bad mons too like they're yeah they're there really some good, good mons. Oh, like i've only i've only lost once when playing mm. when playing this group and that was against um and that was against battle dolphin mm. so it's like if played well this team is super good because there's yes. a lot of nice hard hitters there's a lot of nice bulky hitters you get stuff like snorlax that's a good bulky hitter uh, that can curse up uh Dublade is uh really nice and bulky can set up has priority mm -hmm. and does a lot of damage mega venusaur mm. is a very nice pick um Garchomp yeah, like... is is one of the greatest mons of all time uh, when it comes to overused mm -hmm. at least. It just yes, being yes. able to Infernape so honestly Infernape is in like a really strong draft mon because it has so much versatility. It can go special, it can go physical, it can go mix, it has U-turn, it has stealth rock, it's so fast, it has fake out which can break through again the things that fake out broke for lop honey all yeah. your sashes and your multi scales and be a it nice has anti iron fist iron fist thunder punch can just break some water types if you can set up sun solar beam is pretty funny on it too and it as a z crystal can bring up the like if you don't have that sun one which is the case here you can bring up that gracium z that bloom doom off of solar beam Yep. I tried doing, um, uh, once upon a time, speaking of Infernape, uh, a Blaziken. Mm -hmm. Blaziken mm -hmm. is, is another mon that I really love to play around with. It's not as fast as Infernape, but it gets access to agility, so... And the speed boost, wherever that's allowed, it's allowed it, in VGC. Yeah, it's allowed in VGC, but not... Most, most yeah. draft formats, not quite. But Infernape yeah, is, yeah. is a tremendous mon. Um, like, mm. as you said, Fake Out makes it the perfect anti-lead um, mm. Pokemon at getting and that U-turn. And Taunt again. Yep, oh, yep, there's Taunt. It's a really fast Taunter. Also, another mon that I've been sneakily having fun with is that Malamar. Uh, because yeah. of the, the contrary superpowers, it mm -hmm. puts a lot of people on edge. Um, oh, yeah. Like it's, I'm very, really I'm very aware on it because it in VGC can be is another like can provide some very interesting interactions specifically with bulldoze. Mm -hmm. 
because Bulldoze will raise Malamar's speed while also dropping both of your opponent's speed as well. Yeah, um, and also, fun fact, uh, if none of you noticed this before, Malamar shares a dual typing with um, Hoop Unbound, and Hoop Unbound being mm. one of the most threatening wall breakers. So oh, if, yes. you, if you want to talk about type coverage, there you go. Like, Malamar like my it. last my last draft, I drafted the Mega Lop Honey and Hooper Unbound on the same roster. It's like, this oh, that sounds is, scary. This is insane. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, it was so fun. Just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, one really huge problem with this team is that mm. it's really slow. Fastest mod being yes. 111. It's too slow for it for a draft team you're gonna get outsped mm. by so many teams but uh, although being I able to have feel... the, the kind of bulk that it has really makes up mm. for a little bit of that all right well that was a lot of fun thank you so much for mm -hmm. coming out man uh i'll see Glad you guys yeah i'll see you guys next week with uh week week 11 match uh going up tomorrow I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually recording this the night before I'm going to upload it, so I gotta, I actually got to get going because I'm going to be out of town this week. Yay! All right. Hooray for pre-recording everything. <laughs> so, Have fun yeah. on your time out. Yeah, dude. Um, All right. Good luck. Hope you make it to playoffs. Hope we see each other then. Mm -hmm. And uh, Good luck there yeah. for you too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll get to battle some people I haven't battled yet due to joining in a bit late. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you guys. All right. Roush is out.